Foremost, uh, NVIDIA's latest GeForce driver update enabled resizable bar for all 30 series GPUs, assuming you have your hands on one. And a bunch of motherboards have been rolling out resizable bar support for the motherboards. There was some backlash against Asus for not rolling it out on their older Z390 motherboards, but they have announced that they are now doing it on Z370 and Z390, as well as their Z490 and Z590. So this is exciting for those of you who want to use it. It's honestly not super optimized just yet. Uh, it's not something that has a ton of performance impact. I think Linus Tech Tips has posted a couple videos now about it, about download more performance. And it's like, yeah, in a couple games it does really well, in a couple it does worse, in a couple it does the same. But I think over time, this kind of thing will introduce more performance gains in the future, and hopefully performance impact, or per <laughs> performance impacts. Hopefully production apps will be able to get more performance benefit from it as well. Uh, wrong application. Also, in that same driver update, they released uh, a, they basically released the code 43 restriction that they had on graphics cards that prevented uh, NVIDIA graphics cards from being able to be used in a virtualized machine. Uh, this is something you could kind of hack your way around and work around, but it was very annoying regardless for those of you who wanted to do virtualization and you kept running into the code 43 error. However, again, this is something you could always patch out or hack out. And so it's kind of more as Wendell explains it, a bit more of a political move rather than actually doing anything different at the moment. But we are hoping that it moves forward towards the VFIO and SRIOV steps of actually showing the capability of using one graphics card in multiple virtual machines at the same time, which has a lot of performance impacts. I will just point you to Windows video on the subject if you want to learn more. NVIDIA had their usual annual GTC presentation conference, what have you. Uh, in which they also revealed the RTX A4000 and 5000 GPUs. Uh, we already heard about the A6000, which has 48 gigs of VRAM. The A5000 has 24 gigs of VRAM. These are effectively the new Quadros. They're not called Quadros anymore. I don't understand why. Uh, but they are the new mid-range Quadros. The A4000 has 16 gigs of VRAM. The A5000 has 24, like I said. Uh, and they are pretty sweet looking and should be pretty powerful and come with the validated... Uh, drivers and things like that for production apps. I previously, I can't remember if it was 2020 or 2019, but I actually tested the Quadro RTX 6000, I believe, versus my Titan RTX, and they were basically spec for spec identical for the most part, just validated drivers on the Quadro, and I did notice some stability in certain programs kind of being improved a little bit with the Quadro, but overall performance-wise, the Titan RTX that I have in my main production PC was basically on par, and so it wasn't worth the double price point to get the Quadro drivers. However, with the A6000 having 48 gigs of VRAM on top of higher specs, it's looking kind of appealing, but I would like to be able to just add it to my water cooling loop because I don't like their lower cooler design. But they're great hardware for production apps and things like that if you're working with a proper studio, uh, not an independent creator who doesn't have budgets for that kind of thing. They also announced that they're making CPUs again. They are making microprocessors for servers based around uh, ARM processors, which as you know, they either acquired or have been working on acquiring since last year. Uh, they, they, ARM is now basically becoming part of NVIDIA and with that they are making ARM based CPUs for servers to compete with Intel and AMD for the first time in a very, very long time. The first CPU is named Grace as a code name, um, and it should work better with their graphics chips and work really cool for some AI stuff and a lot of stuff we'll honestly never see firsthand, but pretty neat regardless um, as they are making big pushes towards AI workflows and things like that, which is pretty neat. They also announced a new uh, AI... Uh, oh yeah, this is the press release about the... CPU again. Um, they also announced a new uh, design collaboration and simulation platform for enterprises called Omniverse, which implements some of those technologies. And this is kind of a culmination of what they've been showing in previous presentations, where it's this like weird high tech thing we don't see any more about, such as the, like game engine simulation stuff and all that. I'm very stoked to see what comes of this, but again, this isn't something we're going to see in our like hands anytime soon. But they had a lot of announcements for GTC. I think there's a couple others that I missed, um, but stoked to see this. They're also getting new tech that's involved in the video conferencing stuff. If you saw that last year, 
Um, they announced that there's a new AI tech that uh, will basically replace video compression for video calls and allow you to interpolate frames so that you're not compressing every single frame and you're keeping higher quality up. Some of that tech is finally coming forward as well. And so I'm stoked to see some of that come to life. <laughs>